Well, amen, amen. Praise God. We're talking about tonight. What is it? Amen. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word. It's your word is what leads us, guides us, directs us into every area of life in Jesus' name. We're going to talk about how faith works and how faith doesn't work. So first of all, we know faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. When you, the second that you stop hearing faith is the second that you start talking doubt. So if you're having trouble uh, with your faith, if it's, you're thinking it's hard, which faith is the simplest thing in the universe, <laughs> but if you think it's hard, that means you've been listening to doubt instead of developing in faith. So if you got a Bible, you can open it up to Hebrews 11, 6. It says it's impossible to please God without faith. So if you're doing anything else trying to relate to God, then it's impossible because only faith works. Uh, like over in Galatians, it says, faith works. Okay, everybody fold the Bibles up, turn your tablets off, let's go home. That's all you need to know. Faith works. It's impossible to please God without faith. The whole Bible, your whole relationship with God is based on those two Scriptures. You should know them just like that. And then faith cometh by hearing and 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 hearing. And hearing, and hearing, and hearing. Romans 10, 17. And then Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes you're healed. You've got to put faith in that. Not just believe that. It's just like it's just like you believe you're sitting in that chair. Yeah. How come you don't know it? Huh? How come you don't know you're sitting in the chair? <laughs> see, see how thin line that is. You can say, "Well, I believe in the scripture." Well, why don't you know it? See, you got to take another step. Faith would simply know I have it. I don't believe it's coming. I believe I have it. Okay, so, and then Romans 10, 9, confess Jesus as Lord, believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead. Those scriptures can never leave you. Now, your faith is based on all of that. Okay, see, it's, it's like this. You can talk yourself into it by reading who you are in Christ. So that, I know it sounds some simple teaching. I had somebody, a lot of people on the internet said, you are the most simplest person, the simplest preacher I've ever listened to in my whole life. Well, how would you like it if I preach complicated? Oh, no, no, no. We're not saying you're s simple like retarded or nothing. <laughs> We're saying that you're simple, so simple to understand. Well, I can't take no credit for it. This morning, after praying in tongues for an hour and Develop, studying along the lines of faith-based material and reading the Bible a few chapters, when I got ready to get up to start the day, the Lord just dropped this inside of me. So I can't take no credit for it. I took my tablet and just started saying what He said. You can talk yourself into it, faith. You can talk yourself out of it by listening to doubt. On the way down here, we was talking about that. You can just simply talk yourself into staying in faith. You. You. You don't have to pray. Now, God, oh, Lord, help me to please you. You're going to pray that prayer. He told you what to do to please Him. You talk yourself into it. I believe I receive. I believe I have it. Talk yourself out of it. You're going to starve your doubts. To death, if you just keep me stay in faith, you'll starve your doubts to death. They will stop. Now, if you wait three seconds, they'll show back up again, but you've got to talk yourself back into faith again. Just stay in it. You can talk yourself, yourself into staying in faith too. When the, when the things come, instead of entertaining uh, other thoughts than faith, which don't please God, it's actually a sin, Romans says, then guess what? Don't talk yourself out of it. Just stay in it. Say, no, I'm not going to do that. 
not going to go by, see, by going by what you feel and going by what you see and going by what somebody's saying to you is an attack on you to get you quit talking faith. The excuses can work in the positive, can work in the faith realm. The excuses can work in the negative realm, in the doubt realm. Or you can make excuses, you just stay in the positive realm of faith. You can, it's, it's up to you. It's not even up to God. See, it's up to you. Every time a thought comes, every time a person says something, every time somebody talks to you on the phone or sends you a text, or every time, a, every time something happens, every time you look at the positive outcome or negative outcome, what does the Bible say? Then just say that. Well, it just looks like it's not working. Well, it just looks like that we wasn't going to get this building, but it's in it and it's paid for. It looked like we wasn't going to drive down here uh, yesterday because it was absolutely, it was, the gas gauge said zero. <laughs> well, we went, we went and filled it up today. You know, nobody knew that but me. And uh, I just said, no, the same guy that got been getting us down here for 20 years is the same guy that's still going to get us down here today. We don't owe any bills. We don't. This place has been paid for for years. We're, in the, we're, we're remodeling if you want to send some funds for that. Uh, don't worry, you get a hundredfold return on that. Deuteronomy 111 multiplied thousands. Is God, God works it out where it gets right to your hands. Uh, you know, it looks like the lawn is just not going to get mowed, even though we paid. The guy got sick and different things. But you know what? We already spoke to it. We said that he's healed, he's set free, he's delivered, and that he's got a wild hair and he'd come down here and mow this thing up. And, Make it look like a golf course and weed eat around everything and trim everything up and make it look beautiful. Hey Amen. Every seat's filled. Every person's filled with the glory and the presence and the love of God right here at Unity of Faith Church. Amen. Or you can make excuses to just say and stay in faith. That's the way it works. I know that's simple teaching. I know it's very simple. But a lot of times people get, they get over in the book of Revelation and they get over in the Old Testament law stuff. They're trying to do a bunch of stuff that it's just it's just not going to work. It's just rhetoric. It's just vain jangling. The faith is not vain jangling. Faith is what pleases God. We're all the way back around to Hebrews 11.6. Let me read this through here one more time. I know it's simple, but it is profound. That's what I appreciate about God. He can say something that's so simple that it's profound and it'll stick with you. And to stick with you when you're going through hell or when you're living on top of the mountain or it seems like the mountain's on top of you. None of that matters because faith still works. You can talk yourself into it. You say, no, it's a choice. See, see, cho faith is a choice. It don't happen by chance. Healing is a choice. Financial prosperity is a choice. It does not happen by chance. Oh, when God gets good and ready, I guess He's going to do it. No, it's not according to God. It's according to your faith. Even all through the New Testament, Jesus said, well, I was able to do this according to your faith. And your faith would do what? You could talk yourself into it. Or you could talk yourself out of it. Or you could just simply talk yourself into staying in it. Faith. You can make excuses. You can't uh, excuse can make the positive work. Excuse can make the po can work in the negative. See, excuse can work in the positive. Excuses can work in the negative. Or you can make excuses, excuse to just stay in the positive of faith. Amen. I have it. Faith would just simply say, I have it. It's not coming. That's hope. I uh, wish I had it. God sees fit. I guess God don't want me to have this. It's been a long time. No, you don't change. You don't do James. You don't do James. What James one eight? Uh, a double-minded man's unstable in all of his ways. You do not change. You don't use your human and reasoning. Your human reasoning is actually an enemy against faith. Your human feelings is actually an enemy against faith. And in case you hadn't noticed it, friends and family that aren't in faith, they're actually an enemy against you. Amen. Even though we don't wrestle against them, so you just have to stay 
uh, keep praying for them. Ephesians 3.20. Uh, Lord, you can think, dream, or imagine. And then it says what? Ephesians 3.20. Lord, you can think, dream, imagine. According to the power that works in you. See, it's not up to God what you get. It's up to you, but you're the one who has to stay in faith. Faith will cause you to be a, a money uh, a money magnet. Especially when you sow and give. Pay your tithes. Give your tithes. Become money I mean, sometimes it looks like that bill is just not going to get paid, but it's all paid. We don't owe any out we don't owe any old bills. We've been we don't owe any old water bills or gas bills or electric bills or uh, all the workers that come down here, they're paid. They're not waiting on any payments. We don't have them work unless we have the money. We do got some wisdom. We don't owe them. They'd actually probably come and let us pay them later, but we're not going to do that. Uh, the money comes, they work, we pay them the second they get ready to go home. Amen. So that way you don't owe anybody. You keep a good reputation in the community. So be blessed today. And rewind this video and watch it a hundred times. It's going to help you. It'll help you in your in your thought processes, the way you think. See, and when you do that, what happens is you start thinking. You start doing Romans 12. You renew your mind of faith, verse three. You start renewing your mind to the word, the word of God and faith. And when you do, you start growing a faith. But when your faith starts growing, guess what? God can do even more in your life. Why? Because you're more open in the sense and even available to Him. Amen. See, you'll get 100% of your doubts if you stay in them. But you'll get 100% uh, of faith and the blessings of God, but you're the one who has to stay on that side of life. Have a good one. Have a great one. No matter what the doctor says, you go by what the Word of God says. Go to sleep every night. I am the healed. I am the healed. I am the healed. You know, my blood pressure is 120 over 80. My, my sugar is totally normal. My, my body, I, I'm cancer free. I'm sickness free. I'm disease free. It's impossible for you to kill me, devil, or anybody else. Because Isaiah 53, 5, by stripes I'm healed. Because Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Have a good one. Have a great one. God bless. Give your life to Jesus. Lord Jesus, take my life, like my friend said, and do something with it. Take this mess and do something with it. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Just begin to start in faith. Romans 19. And you that has a girlfriend that don't want no, nothing to do with God, she ain't your friend, she's your enemy. Get rid of her. Get rid of her. There's going to be a life of torment. Amen. Oh, I'll start going to church uh, when we get saved. No, she won't. If she won't serve God now, she won't serve God later. A he, a he or a she, get rid of them. You're better off without them. Well, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be lonely. You won't be. You'll never be alone with Jesus, and He'll get you a good one. He'll get you a good, a good person. Have a great one. Amen. Amen, amen. Isaiah 54, 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And sometimes the devil tries to use people as a weapon against you. So don't let it prosper. Have a great one. Have a good one. God bless. Have a separation.